JF Shetford Paddock, this is the West Ham preview. Manchester United travelling down to the London Stadium, is it, Joe? Mm. It's not Upton Park anymore, is it, no. since we had the Olympics? Yeah. Uh, so it's been about 10 years almost. I know. Hey, moving the time. That actually, isn't it? How, yeah. quick that, how long that's been? It, is, it has been. Uh, that's Joe Smith. I'm Jay Motti. Hello. We're going to be looking ahead to the trip to London for Manchester United in the Premier League. Yeah. United, top of the league. You top wouldn't think it, would you? No. With all the doom and gloom that goes on. Yeah, you check Twitter, you'd assume we'd already been relegated. But no, we're actually top of the league. I know, uh, which is obviously a great start. Mm -hmm. Been a pretty positive start, Europe aside. In fact, so the, the signings we've got, Ronaldo's return. And as I mentioned earlier, we are sitting pretty at the top of the table. Mm -hmm. But... As you said, or you look on Twitter, there's a lot of people unhappy. I get it. Unhappy with the result against mm. Young Boys. It wasn't a great result. Shocker. But do you feel, Joe, I don't want to be too melodramatic here, but we have to be honest about pressure and United and Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. No trophies so far. So there's always that stick to beating with, mm -hmm. especially losing the Europa League final to a team you know we should have beaten. Yeah. Um, you've brought in Varane, Ronaldo, mm -hmm. Sancho, and Tom Heaton, of course, but players that have elevated the team will expect to win things, will expect to challenge, especially someone like, or players like Ronaldo and Varane who've won the lot. Do you think Oli is under real pressure, sort of, anyway, regardless of, like, you know, just the recent result against Young Boys? He's always going to be under pressure as United manager, but you think he's under probably a, b a bit more pressure is what I'm getting at because of the fact we've made these signings, he hasn't got a trophy, and I'm just sort of saying, you know, can it even translate to being under pressure if you lose against West Ham? I think the I think he's been under pressure the whole time he's been at United. Yeah, I think you look look at what David Moyes did. He was sacked in was it seven months or whatever it was. Yeah, I think eight months. Yeah, I think you're right. Because you're always under pressure at Man United. The expectations were slightly different for Moyes because he took over the best team in England. Yep. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer took over probably the fourth or fifth best team in England. I would, at that time, I would have put our squad behind uh, Tottenham's as well as Liverpool, City's, and Chelsea's. I think that's um, a fair comment. Now I would say we've got sort of in that ballpark of equal best squad in the league, which is a testament to the job he's done. But the pressure has always been there. And just think, right, we haven't won a trophy, and fair enough, even me and you, who aren't calling for all his head by any means, would say we should have won a trophy. Yeah. Not only theoretically because it's Man United, but in actuality, we, we got to play Villarreal to win a trophy, and we didn't beat Villarreal. We should have won that trophy. So think how well he must have done outside of the trophies in terms of progression, in terms of building the squad, in terms of squad harmony, in terms of finishes in the league that overachieve and that uh, are higher than are expected in terms of uh, squad quality, how well he must have done to overcome the fact that he hasn't won a trophy is amazing. Like he's built this squad from, like I said, probably the fifth in the, in the, in the league to I would say equal first now. That is a, a, an excellent achievement in itself. We've gone from third, we've gone to second after that. We're improving w uh, season af after season. And the pressure that he's now developed for himself, which is apparently his own fault or, you know, it's like, it's like you lose one game and now you're going to get sacked because he's got this team to a point where the expectation is we need to be challenging for a title. Well, he's the one that's built that expectation. It's acted as though, you know, well, Fergie took over for the last two years and now Ollie's come in and he's got the Moyes job again. Well, what he's actually done is he's rebuilt from five years of shit to a team that now the expectation is if you don't win the league, you might have to answer questions about your job. That is an amazing difference to where he was three years ago. And people act like, oh, you know, he's got no excuses now. They've given him this great team. Like, he had no input in that. Like, we don't, we haven't seen over the last five years that if you have the wrong manager in or a managers that will consistently try to play ways that aren't like Manchester United, you end up with players in teams that don't make any sense. We've had that year in year for the last few years. So if there is more of an expectation, that is a credit to Solskjaer, not something to beat him with. And yes, losing to young boys is embarrassing and it's stupid and the nature of the defeat was embarrassing and stupid. But we've still got five games left. We're only a point behind Villarreal and Atalanta in that group. It's not like, you know, we're, they're all on nine points and we're on zero. It's very early stages and we are top of the league. I honestly think it's, it's a credit to the job Solskjaer's done that the expectation is so high this season. And, and rather than, you know, we've lost one game, so you've got to go because you're not good enough. He's the one that put the expectations there in the first place. When he arrived, no one said, you need to be challenging for the title this season. He's built the club back up to that's the, the expectation again. And that's an amazing achievement. I agree with everything you just said, but just sort of slightly playing devil's advocate. Yeah, Do on. you think, though, that when you are given, as long as he's been given, 
-hmm. because unlike Van Gaal, he's been given now, he's, he's entering his third full season. Yeah. He had his half a season with Jose when he took over from Jose, which you can sort of put to one side, really, because he inherited that team and he didn't get any transfer windows or anything. No. He just had to work with what he'd been given. And he took over a team that was in disarray. Yeah. Let's not kid. It annoys when people say he took over a team that had just won the Europa League and just finished second. He took over a team that was, what, closer to relegation than it was to the top of the table yeah. and also had about... 18 unhappy players. Yeah. So there was a lot of work to do there. But he's had two full seasons now and he's entering his third season. And I think as a Manchester United manager, I think there's a case to be argued, which I've seen some people doing that. If you're entering your third full season as a Manchester United manager and you've been backed in several transfer mm -hmm. windows, you should be challenging for the title. Yeah. That should be your well, I, I, that I, should be your barometer is a title challenge. I think the barometer is a title challenge. Yeah. But that's because he's lifted the, the standards yeah. to, to that point. Like... The reason, it's like saying, well, he's been back, he's been given three years. Well, there's a reason and, why. And can I just say, sorry to interrupt you, I think he could have been back better. Yeah. People were going about this window like he took over at the beginning of June. Yeah, like he didn't get given yeah. a bag of shit last like, summer. Like last summer, our transfer window was a shambles. Yeah. And instant Cavani exceeded expectations. I don't care what anyone says. Tellez was, you know, a squad player at best. You got a couple of youngsters who may well come good, but aren't, weren't much use to him. Mm. And you uh, also had Donny van der Beek, who, whilst everyone loves Donny van der Beek, was not going to come into the Premier League and set it alight. No. So I'm with you on that. Um, I just feel that on a, on a whole, when you look at the amount of signings, yeah, he's well, had, he's had a lot of money. He's, yeah. He spent a lot of money. Um, but the reason why he's had this is what his, his, his third full season now. The reason why he's had this time is because. He's done well. Yeah, Louis van no, Gaal no, got sacked. Right. I know he won the FA Cup, but would he finish fifth or sixth? That's uh, his sixth. And, and I've heard this argument. I think even Steve's made it about. I would be interested to see his third season, and I understand that. But I couldn't have put up a third season of Louis van Gaal's yeah. football. And Jose, seriously, it was, it, the writing was on the wall from the summer when he was basically saying, "My team is shit, and you haven't backed me." And oh, what, oh, look, isn't it a surprise that he's had another meltdown? We had to get rid of Jose. It's not like we could have just stuck around with it. No, we'd have been fifteenth the season that it season. Was, if we'd that stuck with that it. was that like, start to the season was 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 awful. It was. Yeah. I mean, in Europe we were doing okay, and we had a couple of results. But you know, we got battered off Spurs, beat off West Ham comfortably, ironically. Um, yeah, it was just it wasn't great. Um, obviously, <clears throat> you, you spoke earlier about the signings that he's made, and I mm -hmm. think Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has done very well in the transfer market. Um, you know, one even moving players only moved. He bought Dan James in and moved him on for more money and got two decent years out of him as a squad player. One player he brought in was Aaron Wambasaka, and he's been mm -hmm. in the news a lot lately. Obviously, his red card over in Switzerland in the Champions League. There's also been recent reports <coughs> coming out that Diogo Delo sort of is, is eyeing up the the right back spot. Yeah, where do you stand with Aaron Wambasaka? Do you think that? He is an issue because we've always got these question marks about him or a lot of people have these question marks about him going forward. Mm -hmm. Defensively, he's, he's, I think he's as reliable as any fullback in the world. Yeah, me too. Um, but do you think that is an issue, the right-back position in Aaron wan -Bissaka? Not really. No, that's I think fair it's, enough. I think it's been massively overblown, to, to be yeah. honest. People talking like... And, and, and I'm not using this to have a dig at Diogo Dello because he's never really done anything offensive. He's quite a sort of likeable guy. He seems like a nice bloke. But this thing of... Dallow deserves a chance. He's he's been here for three years. He was here before Aram Wambasaka was here, and people talk like, you know, wambasaka has been here two years and he hasn't improved going forward. Well, he got six assists last season. That's a decent, which return. I think is the same as Luke Shaw for Manchester United. Right. He's also, like you said, defensively as good as anyone. And I know people say, oh, he gets caught out of position. Show me a right back or a full back that doesn't get caught out of position defensively. Well, Luke Shaw, is, Luke, if you're looking at him as a good example of someone who's considered to be one of the best in the world in his position, yeah. he gets caught up. He got caught up position on Tuesday. Yeah, he's, he's, he doesn't close his men down very and well. That's he, not he's, necessarily he's, a, it's a weakness. Him, no, it's a weakness your point. But you can't be world class going forward and world class defensively every single time. And I know he's got his deficiencies going forward. He's not the best attacking fullback in the world or in the league or even in the bottom half. But yeah. overall, he isn't an issue for me. Like, when you look at how good he is one-on-one, -on -one, you look at the City games, the Raheem Sterling in particular, is almost a, it's almost a joke at this point that he can't get past Wan-Bissaka either, doesn't play him or puts him on the other side to get away from him. He's sensational at that. And he did get six assists for his last season as well, which, again, no, no offence to Diogo Dalla, but this is the, the player that people are trying to get Wan-Bissaka out for. He played 30-odd 30, 30 games for uh, Milan last season, got three assists. Wan-Bissaka played 50-odd games for United last season, got six assists. So the ratio of games to assists is no better. 
And Wan Bissaka is much better defensively. I don't think anyone would doubt that. Not at all. And he was playing in a more difficult league than, than Diego yeah. Dallo was. So this whole thing of like, well, you know, let's get Dallo in. Okay, but I don't know what he's ever shown. We've seen world class attributes from from Wan Bissaka consistently. And yes, he has times in, he has lapses in concentration and he's not the best going forward. But I still think he's one of the best right backs in the league. I think we're just trying to find problems. And because he stupidly gave the ball away and gave a red card away, which isn't something he does hardly ever. Yeah. It's not like he's giving red... Well, yeah, it was because he's got a shit touch, hasn't he? And he got a shit touch, he gave a red card. Well, he's always had a shit touch. And he don't get sent off every week. It's obviously an, an uncharacteristic sending off for him. So I just think it's... I don't... It's, it's almost as though over the last two or three years, opposition fans' doubts about Ole Gunnar Solskjaer have slowly permeated the United fan base to yeah. the point where it's like, he is shit, isn't he? It is just a matter of time until he goes. When Bissaka is shit, isn't he? It, is like the, the, it just becomes that everyone's shit because you have one bad game and then everyone just starts believing it. And until we win a trophy, everyone's just going to believe it. I just think it's ludicrous. I think Wan bissaka has got his weaknesses, but he's a very, very good right back and far better than anything we've had in, in a decade or more. No, I completely sort of agree with all that, to be honest with you. I'm a big Aaron Mamba Saka fan. I, I think, yeah, you, I, I think I would like to see more of him going forward. Um, I don't think he's quite the disaster that he's been made out to be. I think sometimes the, the issue you have with Mamba Saka is it does seem to be, this is going to sound a bit perverse the way I'm putting it, but it's like the opposition give him space because they know he can't cross. Mm. There's times when you look at it and you think he's being given that much space because mm. they're going, don't worry about him. Just pick up Cavani or pick up Rashford or pick up Greenwood for yeah, the pullback. Yeah, line. right. Let him have his cross because it'll be rubbish. And I think he does need to improve on that. But he's only he's still only young. We write off players too early. I've said this to you the other day. You know, the best sort of the fullback I've ever seen is Denny Serwin. And when he was a, a youngster, he got released by Leeds, went to Oldham, was playing in the second tier. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Uh, and then came to Manchester United. Now, I'm not saying Aaron is going to be as good as Dennis Irwin. My point is, you can improve in your 20s. You're not mm. done at 23 and that's the end of it. And I think there's another level for Aaron wan to, to to reach going forward. Uh, with all that in mind, then, give us your starting 11 for the trip to West Ham, whether it's got Aaron wan in it or not. I believe this is a copy of the uh, starting 11 against Newcastle. Um, but with Donny in there instead. Uh, so I've gone with uh, De Gea, I've got Wan-Bissaka, I've got Varane, I've got Maguire and Shaw. I've got Donny and uh, Pogba, I believe, as the two deep players there. And then Greenwood, Fernandez, and um, Sancho on the left with Ronaldo up front. Oh, interesting one, that. Mm. Um, so obviously a very good... It feels like you can always say this now, United, a very strong side. Mm. Why have you made the changes that you've made? Well, I, I think Donny deserves another chance. No, I'm, I'm with you. We'll get to my team, but I understand that, yeah. Um, I think he deserves another chance. He was sort of yanked off at half-time against he was young what? boys. He was, he was yanked Usually off. just get a he drink. Was, he was wanked Donny. off <laughs> at half-time. Um, I think unfairly, not as in it was a bad choice. I think just because the red card, it changes things. You have to sort of make your mind up and, you know, we went a different way. We went five at the back, so we took someone out of the midfield. Um, but I don't think he was playing badly. McTominay presumably still isn't, even if he's available, he's not going to be, you know, match fit. He, he simply can't be. Uh, Matic, again, uh, you know, I don't think it necessarily works with him and Fred in there. So I'd, I'd go a bit more sure and go with Van der Beek in there. But I think that front four, you know, Greenwood and Sancho and, and Bruno and Ronaldo, I think that works. Yeah, I, I think you're right. Um, I completely understand that. I think West Ham have quite a strong midfield, but we've got, I think Donny, I think Donny, yeah, he's a little bit hard done by. And this is his chance. He can show us what he made. He played, at, um, he played against West Ham away last season, I think, didn't he? Mm. If memory serves. Um, I think so, anyway. Get involved in the comments and let me know if I'm wrong. Uh, but no, I'd like to see him. He, you know, he, he deserves opportunity. I don't think against young boys he had that because of the sending off. Mm -hmm. um, the first half, he did okay. I would have wanted to see the second half, but unfortunately, it wasn't to be. Um, I've gone slightly different. If you look at my team, I've gone with a 4-3-3. I've gone with the, say, the the back five, which is the yep. back five in it. Don't need to go into that. I've got Fred as a holding midfielder. Mm -hmm. I know people will be going, oh, Fred as a holding midfielder. But I just feel like, um, I feel Oli still trusted him. This is my predicted 11, obviously. And I feel that, I thought he did okay yeah. against young boys. I do. Yeah. And I think, had Matic not come on at all, maybe Matic should be in this this one. But I, I just don't know if he will be because I think that Oli might think, right, I need the legs of Fred. Um 
I've given Don, Donny van der Beek a chance alongside Bruno in the midfield. I put Pogba on as almost like a left winger. Um, he can play there. He, he's quite effective there. He's very effective there. Um, some kid called Chrissy, Ronnie or some up front. Mm. Um, and Jaden Sancho on the right. I'm pained. I'm pained to not have Mason Greenwood in there. And it is a bit silly when you think that he didn't play against young boys. I just feel Ronnie's going to want to play. He's going to lead the line. I just feel like it might be one for Greenwood to come off. I know he got a goal against West Ham. Mm. And I'm quite happy to be wrong. This is my prediction 11. If Greenwood starts, I'll be happy. I love Mason Greenwood. Yeah. And he's been on fire in the Premier League. I'm just wondering whether Oli might go a little bit different and feel like Greenwood is a better option to have off the bench. And I don't know if he's going to put Ronaldo on the bench and bring him on. I also feel like Sancho will want to start as well because mm. he was took off at also one he? It's 30 minutes away. Yeah. Um, so I feel like you've got a few players there who are going to have a bit of a point to prove, probably deserve more of a chance. But yeah, like yourself, a strong team, mm -hmm. any team for Manchester United really is a strong team. The only sort of question marks are around the midfield. Um, get involved in the comments and let us know what you think about my team, Joe's team, or what changes you'd like mm. to see made. Moving on to West Ham, yeah. and I never thought I'd say this, but they're doing really well, aren't they, under David mm. Moyes? Well, yeah. they're in Europe. Yeah. They've got Europa League games sorted. They're a good team. They're, you know, comfortably a top 10 team now when it looked like they were on that trajectory. Do you know that Newcastle were on a few years ago when they got relegated, that yeah. Sunderland were on, that Palace seemed to be on as well? That kind of, we're just slipping every year. And eventually we're going to go down. Yeah, it felt like they're on that, and then all of a sudden Moyes comes in, and they just completely go the other way with it. And you know, top sixteen for most of the season, pushing for Champions League places up until the last month, didn't quite make it in the end because of some pretty miraculous performances from Liverpool. But yeah, they look like a, they're a strong, consistently good team now. And was it eight points after four games, two wins, two draws? You know, Mikel Antonio is absolutely on fire. Unfortunately for United, he's uh, he's suspended for this one because he got a red card. Fortunately, didn't he? unfortunately for your fantasy football team and everybody else who's been flying out because he's like the staple, isn't he? Yeah, everyone's for, got him for a, a strong side. It's weird with David Moyes. I think like West Ham, it, it, it could be like the ideal fit for him. I know his words mm -hmm. aren't really well, but he did well at Everton, didn't he? When he he was there for ten years and yeah. they were always sort of consistently top eight. Top eight, yeah. yeah. Um, obviously got into the Champions League once, got to the FA Cup final, I think, one. Well, I know they did because they beat us in the semis, didn't they? Mm -hmm. um, probably, you know, could have done with winning a trophy and having a better record against Liverpool. But on the whole, I think he, you know, it, it was a good decade. I mean, he got Definitely. the United job on the back of it. West Ham, historically, always used to have long-term managers as well. I think it was like the first few years of the Premier League or when they came into the Premier League, they'd only ever had seven managers in their history. Like they'd only have they had like loads like John like yeah there was a, there was a, a record and forgive me if I'm getting a little bit wrong you can get involved in the comments so I think like they'd have like the likes of John Lyle and people like that mm. who'd been there for like ten years and they had all these sort of long term managers maybe he could do something you know sort of like that at West yeah. Ham like he did at, at Everton and stay, stick around certainly enjoying it um, who have you sort of singled out as the, the danger man well I've gone, I've gone for the new signing 30 million euros Nikola Vlasic yeah. from CSK Moscow he made his debut last week I think he came on as a sub yeah. so it's not certain that he'll start but with Antonio missing uh, 12 goals 6 assists I think it was from last season and like I said 30 million euros 27 million quid he's going to be playing for him. So That's I think big money for West Ham, man. Yeah, it's massive. Well, yeah. It's big money for anyone. No, you know, no, you're right. United yeah. spent 30 million euros on someone. Well, we have it with Donny, don't we? We spent yeah. 35 million quid on him and yeah. then people are losing their minds that he's not playing. Exactly. So, yeah, it's, it's a big investment, especially for a team that's you know not challenging for titles. So I think he'll probably start. Um, and, yeah, probably he's the one to watch out for. If not him, then Ben Rahm has been sensational as well this season, hasn't he? Just before we go to the predicted uh, scores, just to move backwards slightly, is there any part of you that could see Oli giving Jesse a chance in this game? Because he made a mistake the other day and because of the time he had at West Ham last season. He does Did like that come into that. your thinking with your prediction 11? Yeah, because Oli does like that sort of playing you against your old team type thing. Yeah, he? he did He's it with um, Dean Anderson didn't he, yeah. against Sheffield United. Yeah, Sheffield United. And, and didn't work out very well, but... He well, we won it. the game. I know. <laughs> but he did yeah. give an absolute clanger. Yeah. Um, it crossed my mind, but I think he has actually played... You know, he came on against Newcastle, obviously scored. Yeah. He came on against... Um, Young boys and yeah. was involved in the goal again, which you know not in the same way as he was against Newcastle, but he's certainly involved. Uh, I don't think he'll start. No. I don't think he deserves to start, not because of the, you know you've been punished for giving that goal away because that was uncharacteristic, but just his performances. He's not as good as Greenwood, who's been brilliant, and Sancho, who's you know the last three years has been one of the best creators in the world, and obviously Ronaldo. I, I don't see quite where he fits in the starting lineup, um, but it wouldn't be stunning. I wouldn't be like. You know, I mean, Twitter I will be. If yeah, that happens. I don't expect it 
but I could see it just because yeah. we know Ollie likes to sort of play against your old team type thing. Um, but I don't think he'll No, done. I agree. And I think that if he does and it doesn't work out, Ollie's going to have a lot of explaining to do because that yeah. is a stick that's used to beat him as being overly sentimental at times. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, I, I can save it for when we're going to score predictions, but this is going to be a really tough game. This yeah. isn't just like, oh, well, let's bounce back and win. These are one of the best teams in the league at home with the fans back. It's going to be really horrible, this game, I think. And we struggle there as well. Over the last four or five years, I think we've only won twice there. I um, I remember I saw something on, on Twitter earlier, and it just reminded me of this game because it was it was like a thread. I think it was from one of Fergie's books. And mm. I must have missed this, or it was an interview he gave. And he spoke about the time of going to Upton Park and losing 4-0 to West Ham. And I was at this game. Mm. It was in the Carabao Cup and the League Cup, as it was. Down there, it was a grim night. It's like midweek game. It started to snow. We got beat 4-0. I think Carlton Cole and Jonathan Spector got the mm. goals. Awful performance by Manchester United. And at 2-0 down, um, I think he brought on Wes Brown for Johnny Evans. Mm -hmm. or I think it was Johnny Evans. or jo I think it was Johnny Evans. Um, he swapped in Wes Brown. And I think one of the West Ham coaches said, you're going to make a difference, like as a joke. Mm. Uh, you know, and so Fergie said he remembered that. And he told the players, like, we're going to relegate these. And then if you, I think it was later on in the season or next season when uh, Wayne Rooney, I think when he swore into the camera, I think it was that oh, game. Yeah. And later on that, we beat him 4-2 uh, and they got relegated. And it's just like that. It's Fergie. It's like with Sunderland, that thing. Yeah. Remember this. We'll get back. He was always very good at that. Um, go on then. We've all been, all things considered, what do you think the score's going to be? <sighs> Honestly, I think it's going to be, if it's 1-1, I'm not surprised. I'm going to predict a win because I think we we will have a bit just too much about us. Yeah. I think we need to speed up the play from from the young boys game. We're slow. They looked more aggressive, faster, quicker, sharper than we did. We can't have it's almost like we had a bit of we've got fucking world class players. We can just jog about and you'll you know, we'll hold you off and we'll push you out of the way and we'll take a bit longer on the ball because we're really good. Yeah. There was a bit of complacency almost to that young boys performance even outside of the obvious mistakes. We need to snap out of that immediately. Um, I'm going to go two on United, but honestly, it could be anything. If we if if we lose this, I'd, I wouldn't be surprised. It's a really horrible game, and it's just if we'd have won the Young Boys game, I'd have so much more confidence. But we've got a pressure on us now that we really didn't need after this game because this is a tough game, no matter what, especially how well they're playing. Hopefully, they'll be lacking firepower. So. 2-1 United. I want to see a solid defensive performance yeah. from us. I think that's been lacking. Yep. I think you look at the, the Southampton game, even the Wolves game, mm -hmm. um, and also the, um, Newcastle. the Newcastle game, we were all over the place at one point defensively against a pretty average Premier League team. Mm -hmm. um, so I think we need to show a bit of solidity defensively. So I'm going to go for a 1-0. Mm. I think we, we will. I think the likes of Maguire and Varane and everyone will be like, right, we need to show that we're not all over the gaff. Um, and hopefully we can do. But yeah, I th I'm with you. I think it is going to be a very tough afternoon. Um, we'll have you covered for that. We'll have a watch along. Make sure as well you're checking out the Paddock merch. Look at that. Um, yes, I've got the Ollie's Tricky Reds one. Go over to paddockmerch.com. We've got loads of different t-shirts, hoodies, long sleeve t-shirts, all that good stuff. Doesn't matter who your favourite player is. As long as you're a Manchester United fan, we've got you covered. And if you're not a Manchester United fan, probably just wear it anyway and pretend you are. We've got new uh, stuff coming out soon as well. We've got mugs and hats and all sorts coming soon as well. So nice. we've got new designs and we've also got new products coming. Products. Product. Productivity is important. Mm. And that is what I want. Great. Um, <laughs> nice done. Go and check him out on socials, Joe Smith 93. You know it's to find me, Jay Motte. If you're not subscribing, do subscribe to the mm. channel. We're over 605,000 now. I want us at 700,000. 700,000. By the end of the season. And we can do it because we've been flying recently with people getting involved and subscribing. So it's great to say... This has been Paddock Preview for the West Ham Premier League game. Thanks for watching.